All right, so you're thinking about getting a new Tacoma. I just got a 2022 Tacoma Limited. This thing had uh, three miles on it from the dealership. Brand new, very nice truck. I really enjoy the way that it looks and the color of it. I believe this is the nightshade black. It's a little, uh, has like little sparkles and stuff in it. It's hard to see here, but it's uh, just a pure black color. Everything's blacked out. You got the Limited badge blacked out and then the back lettering is blacked out and everything and then yeah, the lettering here is backed out the v6 model as well and the exhaust the tip of it is blacked out as well and the wheels and then the badging on the side and the front yep and then it has uh 265 by 60 i think 18s on the front yeah by 18s so it's a pretty decent tire. It looks very small on this truck compared to how they look on a smaller vehicle, like the tires themselves. I'll show you right here, uh, the under view. So you can see how thin the tires look in comparison to a smaller vehicle. It also has the uh, outlet on the back there. That's the 120 outlet. So if you wanna go camping or anything, you can can plug some stuff into it maybe like a grill or or anything like that like a, an electric grill and then it also has these tie down points and then it has this little compartment in the back it's it's just empty there's nothing in it so i'll show you that right here it's just a little empty box nothing special it also does have a, a spare tire underneath as well oh man i'm having trouble getting this thing in there we go then it has more tie down points, some in the corner. And then I don't know what the, the specs of the spare tire are, but there they are down there. As a, it feels pretty nice in terms of riding. I'm not really too familiar with trucks themselves because this is the first and only truck I've ever owned, but I'll show you the inside as well. So, you know, you have all your, uh, your window buttons. The front two windows are automatic up and down. My hand looks so weird right now. <laughs> But uh, the front windows are up and down automatic, like you just press them and then they go up and down on their own. You have your adjustments on your seat. Now the driver's side is the only side that only has the, uh, or that has the electricity or the, <laughs> the electric power. So you have like your up and down of the seat itself and then your forward and backward of the back. And then you have this, uh, this bolster here for your lumbar support. So that also goes in and then also comes out. And then if you look inside the truck, I mean, you'll see, uh, you know, you got your brake and gas pedal. And then I don't know what, I don't know what this button does. Huh. Maybe that's for uh, tire pressure. I'm not too sure. I didn't even know about that button. And then you have, uh, you know, the state of the art jellyfish launcher, the, uh, the light for the back of the truck, for the truck bed. You have your automatic headlights. I believe it's for your automatic high beams. If you turn this on, it'll uh dim your high beams automatically if there's a car coming and then you have your switch for that outlet in the back and then you have your traction control and then you have this button here which does your uh panoramic 360 view camera and then it also shows you the rear camera which i'll get into that in a second on the gauge cluster you have all of your all of your gauges and settings so you have uh this switch right here it pushes in which i believe does your odometer so I'll show that right now. I'll start the truck up as well. So uh, foot on the brake, hold the button, and then it starts. So you get your uh, your main gauge cluster. So if you press this in, it'll tell you your trip counts. So you can do regular odometer, trip one, trip two, and then just set it to normal. Or you could just have it off entirely and not tell you your mileage. And then if you switch, if you turn this little knob to the left or right, that'll adjust your brightness. So turn it to the right, adjust brightness, turn it left, adjust it down. And then you also have your steering wheel controls. So these all, uh, it'll go through different settings. So you can see here, it'll tell me average fuel consumption, uh, travel distance. I believe that's if you set a travel, I'm not entirely sure how that works. Maybe that has to do with the, uh, the navigation but you have your other settings uh time until rest i imagine that's like if you're traveling for a very very long time like probably like i don't know i'm gonna guess like six hours or ten hours or something i i imagine it probably gives you like a, a cool down 
I don't know if it affects the truck, like if the truck will like not let you drive any further, but I haven't driven that far to know. I wish I knew more about that, but uh, I imagine it probably just gives you guidelines on when you should be resting. And then uh, the bottom one is blank. I'm not really too sure what that one entails. You got a compass, and then you got your music, uh, push for source, so it means this. So if I push that, it'll uh, it'll probably ask me, okay, yeah, it'll ask me like my settings. And then there's this reverse button right here, so you press that to go back. And then you have, um, that's for your uh, cruise control. So that bottom one is lane assist, and then that top one, I believe, is your setting of the cruise control, which you also have the knob here. So when I press that, it says radar ready, so that means it's it's ready to use. And then to change your speed limit on the cruise control, I can't do it right now because I'm in park, but you just flip this up and down and it'll give you a readout at the top saying like, you know, like 60 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour, and you can change it by one mile per hour. And then also with the lane assist, um, I haven't used the lane assist. I heard uh, some people say just lane assist in general is, it's, it's weird to get used to. So I haven't messed with it. But this button here also is very nice for the cruise control. I don't know if it'll tell me what it does. No, it won't. So what this button does here is when you press it, it'll show you uh, three settings you can do. You can do uh, close, medium, and far. So when you have cruise control going, you know, you set cruise control. So let's say I have cruise control going at like 60 miles an hour. I press this button and I could set it to short, medium, or far and that'll determine how close it will automatically keep this truck to the vehicle in front of me. So if I put far distance, it'll keep a far distance while also maintaining my cruise control. But let's say I set it for 60 miles per hour and the car in front of me is doing 55. It'll keep my car, like it'll keep the truck going at, you know, whatever speed the car in front of you is going. So it doesn't keep jerking, at least from my experience when I was driving and it didn't do that. I had it set for 78 or something and the car in front of me was going like 65 and it kept up the whole time. It didn't, it didn't jerk back and forth. It wasn't constantly making adjustments. It actually felt really, really smooth. But, uh, aside from that, you also have, uh, some other settings, which I believe this will be your alerts tab, if I'm not mistaken, for, uh, when your oil changes are due and all that and stuff on the app. Uh, I'm not sure what the, the PCS is. I imagine that's parking assist. So it would stop you from, bumping or it'll warn you to stop i was driving i believe this is the parking assist which is where the the beepers come on if you're um if you're close to hitting something it'll it'll bleep beep at you and it'll tell you like break now so i don't think it'll do it automatically but i i could be wrong that might be in the settings uh let's see drive info one digital speed distance to empty okay how about drive info two Oh, okay. These are different settings for the other. Okay, so you can uh, you can change some stuff. Oh, that's pretty nice. With warning. Oh. Okay, so you can uh, set your display to have your speed limit on. Programming. I'm not sure what that does. I wonder if you can change some things. Hold on any screen to customize. Okay. So I'm not too sure how that works. I've never had a, uh, a nice new vehicle. So this is, uh, this is an experience for me. Uh, accent color. Okay. So you could change how the accents of everything looks. All right. Pop-up display. Let's see what that does. Brightness, navigation, phone, shift position. All right. I don't know what programming does. So what does drive info three? Okay, trip distance. So that must be if you're in in here and you're going through here. That must be what that means. So this one maybe it's a blank panel that you can add stuff into, but I imagine that's what those those three things are because uh if you notice the first one said miles per hour and distance to empty. But anyways, aside from that, you also have uh you have other settings for uh for your um your head unit and all that. Uh, this has Apple CarPlay. It also has, uh, being the limited, it has the upgraded JBL speakers. So it has uh, speakers all around it. it, has speakers on the doors. I don't know if the back, the back has speakers too. And then there's a bigger speaker behind the seat, which I'll show you in a minute. 
And then uh, on here, you have your voice activation button, and then you have your volume up, volume down. And then uh, here's where it's a little confusing for me, just, just thinking about it initially. But this top button is to go to the next song, and this bottom button is to go to the previous song. And the reason why it's confusing to me is just because, here, I'll show you right now. My phone just cut out right there. But uh, if you're going through here, right, let's say I have a uh, playlist, you know. I don't know if it'll work this time. Okay, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why. It doesn't like to show your playlists. But yeah, I'll just show you for example. So here's here's where I think it doesn't make sense, where this is up and down. I feel like the volume should be on the top and the like the plus volume should be on the top and the minus volume should be on the bottom. That would make a lot more sense. And then the skip track and go back a track should be left and right. I don't know why Toyota decided to do it this way, but you know, weird questions. But so, you know, your, uh, your normal track settings go up and down and, you know, I'm looking at this and I see down. So I see down words is, uh, the next song so i would think that would correspond like down is the next song on here but that's not the case it's the opposite which is uh, it's a little strange but then also you have uh a call start button and a call end button here so like let's say you're getting a call you could just hit this and answer it right there and then after that you have your uh your apple carplay head unit which i imagine everyone's probably pretty familiar with because they're pretty common on most cars these days but you also have some settings, like uh, this is the beep for the screen, I imagine. Your temperature outside, your miles per gallon. Auto change screen, not sure what that means. Uh, animation, I imagine that's uh, like this right now is probably an animation. No, it doesn't look any different. Driver settings, okay, so maybe you can go... Uh, huh, okay. I imagine that's for if you're setting a profile for a driver, is it not? Oh, okay, that's pretty nice. So I think that's, uh, if I set, maybe if I set the base and all that stuff to a certain setting, whenever my phone connects, it'll uh, automatically go to whatever I have that settings of, as, I don't know what SW sensitivity level means, uh, software update, so you also have some other settings in here too. Obviously you have a clock and then uh, you go to menu. You have your, uh, you have your GPS, which you can use auto car audio, um, the CarPlay for that Apple CarPlay. I don't know why I kept saying audio, but uh, you have your audio settings. So that'll go in through here and you can change your sound settings. You can change your treble bass and all that. And then you also have some other little settings. Projection, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, okay, that must be, the, uh, be for the Apple CarPlay Android uh, auto thing. Traffic incidents, weather, eco. Let's see what eco is. Okay, so just gives you some statistics or, or whatever for it. So let's see, you phone. You know, you could select what phone you want to use, notification display. So I imagine that'll tell you what your notifications will say. It's not too crazy, you know? So your general settings, you have all those too. And then there is a setting to change the uh, auto door lock because I don't know if you know about uh, new cars these days, but the auto door lock is quite annoying. Like, whenever you stop the truck or car or whatever, and the doors just automatically lock, it sometimes gets very annoying, especially if you get in and out of your car quite often. But I don't remember which setting that was under. I think it was under general. I saw it the other day. Okay, Android Auto, CarPlay, clock, obviously, customized home screen, theme settings. I wonder what the theme settings looks like. Let's try red. Oh, okay. Oh, looks a little, looks a little different. All right, how do I exit out? Okay, it doesn't exactly <laughs> exit out. It just scrolls past it. Memorize keyboard history. That'd be pretty nice if you're typing in the same address frequently. So you have your Bluetooth, you could add a new device. And then audio, phone, connect phone, sounds, voice. 
And does this go down? Ah, there we go. Vehicle. So this is where you have your, um, where you could turn off your parking. Uh, you put it in park and door lock. So door lock settings. So here you could do automatic door lock, automatic door unlock, and all that stuff. And then all the extra things. And then over here, you have your climate settings. So AC, and then lights, which I imagine that's just like your headlights. You could set your sensitivity on when they come on, I guess, and how frequently they do. I'm not entirely too sure. And then you have your navigation, you have your Wi-Fi, and then you have your apps, which your apps will connect to. Uh, there's the Toyota app, which will tell you your maintenance, which I believe that app will connect to that. And then you have, I guess, traffic monitoring, so it'll tell you if there's um, an accident and stuff like that, avoid traffic. But I mean, if you're using um, if you're using your Apple CarPlay, that that's it'll do that itself. It should, because usually the Apple Maps usually does that. But aside from that, you also have I got the four x four version of the 2022 Tacoma Limited. Uh, has blind spot monitors, and then it has the ECT power, which I believe has something to do with the transmission. And then I believe this is the parking assist. Uh, where it'll beep at you and scream at you and then right here you have a wireless charger So if you press that the wireless charger will work right here So that's pretty nice like you can put the wireless charger right there and just set your phone down and forget it if your phone has wireless charging capabilities and then um, The thing that's annoying about this is this doesn't activate your Apple CarPlay and then uh, You also have this is for the uh, rear window right there and then you have uh, moon roof as well. And then your buttons here and here. It's pretty nice. And then uh, you have a little compartment thing here. And then just regular mirrors. And they they extend out as well. So they come out. But yeah, overall, I think it is a very nice truck. I, I really enjoy the look of it and how everything feels on it. It feels really nice. I don't know much about trucks and what a good quality truck feels like. But I mean, Toyota is, they're pretty known for having good quality. And then you also have your individual climate control and your settings, heated seats, which is pretty nice, and then your hazards. But um, yeah, I don't know too much about what kind of truck makes a good truck versus a not so good truck. But I, I really enjoy the way that this truck feels. I think it feels really nice, and uh, I'm more into cars, so it is a different experience having a truck instead of a car. As you know, uh, on some of my YouTube videos, you can see I always drive the FRS, which I do really enjoy that car, and I do not plan on getting rid of that car ever. I actually got this truck in order to tow that car whenever it blows up or whatever happens to it, so... <laughs> There is that. The towing capacity of this truck is rated at 6,400 pounds for a 3.5 liter V6, which that's, I mean, it's it's not a whole lot, but it's decent for what I need. And I don't really need a whole lot more than that. But yeah, right now we're just gonna go on a, a short little drive just so you can see how it, how it handles and just how it looks and the overall view that you'll be having whenever you're driving this truck. It's, it's quite nice. It feels smooth. Now, uh, my FRS is very stiff suspension, so it's a little different. It's not as, uh, not as smooth. Very feel every bump that happens in that vehicle at all times. And I do kind of miss that because I do like being able to feel the road. Now, I know not all people are the same with that. Some people like the smooth ride that you get versus the you could feel everything so it really depends on what kind of driver you are the other thing with these trucks too is they are they're not that cheap as well i went ended up getting a brand new one because to get a used one for uh, 300,000 miles like a used 2017 was still like 30 grand so i got this one it came out to about 50 grand which is a little bit more than i wanted but I at least got what I wanted with the thing. So it is it is very nice. It was very hard to find a limited as well because apparently they're very hot items. 
and they were selling out everywhere like every dealership i tried to go to they all sold out they all said they didn't have them so it was very hard to find one i had to call around and probably ask at least 10 dealerships if they had them and all the ones that did have them they were all sold out and they sold that day and it was just very hard to to finally find one and i did find this one i originally wanted one in red with the six foot bed but i compromised with this one being black and with the five foot bed but i mean i don't think that's going to be any issue the reason i wanted the six foot bed is just for more options in the future like i have more wiggle room with what i can do with the truck having a six foot bed versus a five foot but i mean you could always get the truck bed extension thing it's like it's like a little gate thing that goes on the end of it like a little uh like a bar or whatever to kind of give you a little bit more room in the trunk or in the the truck bed but yeah overall i really enjoy the the feel of this truck the look of this truck the height of this truck i went with this versus a bigger truck because i really enjoy smaller vehicles and this one just feels way better to me than having a giant truck i've driven big trucks like just a regular like chevy 4x4 or six packs and you know silverados and that kind of stuff just for work but i haven't actually owned the truck so this is a new experience for me and i like that this truck is smaller it's not that big and it's very easy for me in terms of my vision because uh it takes me a while to get used to it even the frs i have a lot of trouble vision wise because i don't have that great of depth perception but this truck having the full 360 view camera is also very very helpful too when it comes to parking uh, i would like to pull over here to just just go over a little bit more of the truck but there are two cars right behind me too uh the truck also i believe does have the um, mirror that auto dims and then it also has the extra buttons, which I don't know what those buttons do. It would be nice to figure out some of the extra things on this truck. Maybe I'll make a video about it, about uh, some of the little extra oddities that I find. And what other things you can do with it. That would be kind of nice. I think I'm going to pull over right here. Just so I can get out of the way of these people. And then I will show you uh, just the, the rest of the little things too. So with this button right here, when you press that, it'll turn on this, which is your 360 view camera. And I believe this is your reverse camera right here. And then this is your, uh, I don't know, that's your forward camera. Yeah. So here, I'll show you. You got your forward camera and then you got your 360 panorama view which is very nice and then if i go into reverse it'll show me my reverse camera and also give me my little indicators and stuff like that and give me some advice on where i'm parking <laughs> like it'll uh just let me see what i'm doing and then i will show you the back side real quick this truck also does take just regular pump gas nothing special nothing premium extra or nothing just regular uh regular gas nothing nothing special which is kind of nice because uh some some of that stuff is really expensive so back here you have another storage compartment nothing too special you can put the seats all the way down i saw somebody had a video on it and the way that they did it is they had to take i think there's like a clip for these for these seats or something and you could take the seats off and then you could put the seats all the way down i believe you have to take the headrests off and then uh, i'll show you the other side as well where that speaker is <laughs> it's screaming at me now and then over here you have the other side which this is where that speaker is that i was talking about so yeah you got a pretty decent sized speaker back here i don't know if it's a if it's a sub or if it's just a regular speaker i'm not too sure but yeah that pretty much wraps it up with the the 2022 tacoma limited i mean you got the leather seats too heated seats very nice looking truck i really like it and uh i hope this helps you guys get a, a nice understanding of what kind of truck you're getting into with it and just uh gives you some idea of 
you know, what's, what's in the truck, what isn't in the truck. It also has a feature where the keys will not lock inside the truck. So if the keys are in the truck, it won't lock which I don't know what that means if, uh, if the truck is running. Hopefully it didn't just lock it, because that would suck. <laughs> but I imagine it probably wouldn't lock it. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you were able to find some helpful information and uh, get some final ideas on if you want a Tacoma. It also comes with the, uh, the locking lugs too, which I don't know if that's special to this particular model or what the dealership had on this truck originally but it was, it's a very nice vehicle i would i would recommend uh taking a good look at it and knowing what you want before going crazy with it and make sure you really are getting what you want especially if you're going to spend all the big money you might as well you might as well get all the attachments and stuff that you want on it but i really enjoy it and i hope you guys uh got a nice view of this truck